Uh, well, I um, was a member of the Red and Puppet Theater. I joined in 71 when I was 19 and was a member of the Red and Puppet Company for a bunch of years. And then I wanted to uh, do my own work. I wanted to be more comedic, sort of centered around comedy, political satire, more crass and American. Red and Puppet being more kind of neo-German expressionist. And I thought it'd be interesting to use objects and junk and crap and shit to make a show. Tchotchkes and toys, tools, appliances, whatever. In 78, I think, is when I started. I had a show called The World of Plastic, and I had some, some objects that were recognizable, some that weren't. I had radio tubes in it. I don't remember what they played. I had a little alligator doll. It was a dog. The mom was a rose that I put some eyeballs on. The dad was a pipe. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the, how I arrived at that place probably had something to do with my, when I was a kid, I was really into pop art. And I really liked um, Warhol and all those guys, but particularly Klaus Oldenburg, you know, with the vinyl toilet. If you look at Oldenburg, Oldenburg wouldn't be possible without Duchamp, you know, and all those pop guys. It's just the way he sort of changed the way we look at stuff, um, Duchamp, and the way we regard objects. And plus, he had a great sense of humor and he was really cool. And I should say, another big influence on me was the uh, Alexander Calder's Circus. Uh, he took uh, cork and wire and different crap, little bits of hardware, and he made. Um, automata with them, a circus that was all with gimmicks and tricks and very beautiful. And I saw that as a kid and that, that was a huge influence on me, the idea of making a show out of just junk and crap. Yeah, to me, I'm, it's just puppets, you know? Yeah. You, you can have a puppet you make that's got a little face and a mouth that operates, or you can get a shoe and use its laces as its arms or uh, I, I guess a lot of it also Peter Schumann used chairs that he would animate or uh, cups and saucers and stuff like that and that probably also pushed me in that direction but there's always sort of highfalutin marketing terms used for different things like you know object theater or whatever and I think a lot of times artists just do what you got to do and you're not you're not actually consciously thinking about I'm making object theater and I'm animating the object it's just my idea was to sort of use the detrius and the shite of society to make comments on this society. You know, we get so much of this crap, these plastic bags blowing everywhere, and, and um, that's actually been a big theme in my work, is how I'm a collaborator in all this shit that I criticize. In the workshop yesterday, um, you, you were saying that, that, that you use this kind of play in a lot of ways to create stuff and to write material, um, and that's, that's also how I work, and I would suggest it's also a way that people could work um, that this could be a technique or whatever, which is, which is to say, just to take the stuff and exploit it and see what it does, how it moves, how you hold it, um, not pondering, but rather just acting, you know, without a lot of mediation of our brain. Uh, it's like when kids play, that's what it's very similar to in a lot of ways, and kids don't sit there and think about their, uh, they don't think about what they're doing when they're playing, they just play. You know what I mean? It's not like all planned and organized and they just play. And um, they're not reading the New York Times review of how they suck or anything like that when they get started with the show. They just play. So we're looking to do that and to be a little bit exempt from uh, criticism because it's not interesting or helpful in any way, shape, or form. And that's the same with an object. If you have a ping pong ball, you know, uh, how does it move? What does it do? Uh, or what is a ping pong ball? You know, you take one, you drop it, what's it look like? It looks like hail. Okay, so it's hail. Uh, it can be a planet, you know, a, a seed, it, you know, whatever. But it, its inherent qualities will, will help you cast it. All I know is I love taking inanimate objects and putting life into them, in imitating the aspects of life. That's what's so interesting about them is that you find little business that they can do and it could be an object or whatever and with an object a lot of times there's just two things they do you know they, their arms wave and their teeth fall out and that's it they don't do anything else and so you know hopefully you find a part for them where their arms wave and their teeth fall out or just their arms wave um, and they'll tell you what to do
um, you know, again, not to be too actorly, but the objects by manipulating, by playing with them and by finding the full range of possibilities with them, they tell you what to do. You don't really get to tell them what to do so much. I, I guess in a lot of ways it's sort of not fair to call it an object workshop today because we have a lot of things like this and I don't know if these are objects or not, you know what I'm saying? Are they already puppets or are they objects or is it, you know, does it matter? Uh, I don't know because they already bring a lot of figurativeness to the table. But you know, I'm interested in puppetry so, and it is kind of a puppet workshop so why not, you know, use these things? Um, What's interesting about them is as soon as you put them down, they're already acting, right? I mean, they're already, already acting. You know what I mean? There's something in the nature of the jiggliness that kind of informs what the character's like and what it says and who it is. and That's really great, isn't it? That fluffiness. <laughs>I don't know. I mean, I uh, hipster slang. I'm not even aware that I use it. I mean, I I invent a lot of words, uh, make up words, and I use a lot of slang. A big influence on me was uh, Lord Buckley, who was a guy, an uh, American comedian, who adopted sort of phony baloney English regal speech, and he married it to black jazz language. His style of of delivery. Um, his rapid fire sound effects and accents and voices was something that was a big influence on me from the beginning uh, because he created an oral landscape that I wanted to uh, be inspired by and then also have a visual component that was as rich as the oral component. That was the idea. And then I had a mom character and she talked like this and she didn't really, she was sort of generic. And she didn't really bring a lot to the table. But once I gave her a southern accent like that, then all of a sudden she had a lot of attitude. So just by giving it an accent, all of a sudden she brings all this shit to the table and she's got all this stuff to say. You know what I mean? And I'm talking actorly bullshit right now, like in the third person. But it really is like that. It's like when you inhabit a character, it's as if you're being possessed by the devil. You know what I mean? It's sort of like that. And, and remember that, that's very powerful when you write a show, really, you know, you're being that character and then it writes its own material, right? You, you know what I'm saying from your experience here today? That there's something that's not, that it's happening on its own, that's sort of... Well, there's a lot of verbal puns, too, um, which is another thing, big Duchampian thing. Uh, you know, for example, you bring up the cup and the saucer. The saucer you could play as a flying saucer, and, you know, people who speak English and get it would get the, get the gag. Like this thing, really, the way that you drink, 
from this thing, the way the duck drinks is like this. It's not like this. But that's funny already, right? That, that it's turned around and that it's wrong. And, and just as I did this, I thought about um, foie gras, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there's so, many, there's so many things just happening all the time. You just want to be open for that shit to land and, and put it together. And, you know, there's a richness in this that's sort of endless.